Remember, the YouTube ads feed the ducks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cooking with Matt. And uh, this is a uh, you know a little different series that I'm starting on the uh, the channel. But this is strictly uh, of the way I cook. I cook in batches. I cook everything I do is big. As as you know, we're watching my channel. It's go big or go home. Um, and I cook the exact same way. So when I cook. I cook in batches, and today we're going to cook uh, a secret recipe of mine that I, I normally another thing I don't do is share my recipes uh, once I hone them out and uh, you know get them down to the way I like them. But I'm going to share this one with you. Uh, this is my 100% whole wheat jalapeno cheddar duck egg bun recipe, and uh, you're going to love it. So now I'll run through the ingredients here so you know uh, what we're doing. It's a big batch. And it's going to, uh, this, uh, this uh, baking is going to entail a road trip, which I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag on that one yet, but there's a road trip in this. Uh, who, who would have ever thought, you know, a uh, making a uh, uh, you know, bun uh, how-to video was going to involve a road trip. But when we get there, you'll see why. So, uh, now the first thing here is I've got the, uh, the sugar and the um, uh, uh, yeast mixed in here already. There's uh, 40 grams of yeast. Uh, 50 milliliters of uh, sugar and we're going to put two cu cups of warm water uh, in here to proof the yeast. Now I'm not doing that right yet because I'm not ready. Um, we've got uh, two liters of milk which will also uh, require two liters of warm water also. Uh, we've got 100 milliliters or half a cup of uh, salt is uh, required for this recipe. Uh, 20 duck eggs. Um, now we've got a cup of white sugar, a cup of shortening, and then we've got uh, three kilograms of extra old cheese. Now it can be, uh, it doesn't matter if it's colored because you know the color means absolutely no difference. The important part, it has to be extra old. Um, and we're gonna grate that up uh, with the grater. And 40 jalapeno peppers. Uh, now the recipe calls for 29 extra large peppers, but I didn't have 29 extra large because we're getting to the end of our uh, pepper supply. So this is uh, basically the same amount of weight. It's 40 jalapeno peppers. You do not touch these peppers without uh, surgical gloves on uh, because the uh, transfer to your hands, if you touch your face, your eyes, your nose, anything, it's nasty. But we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how I uh, process these. The only thing I do is you can see on the end here is I cut the ends off, uh, the stem. That's the only part that I take removed from the uh, pepper. It, it all gets thrown into the uh, blender, which I'll show you how I do this. Uh, I used to grate them, but I found the blender works the best. So. We're going to get uh, started here. The first thing I've got to do is I've got to mix up the uh, eggs here so that uh, it's easier to mix because if I don't do it right now, because they're duck eggs, they're so uh, firm they don't break up if you mix them in. So it's always a good idea when you're cooking with duck eggs is to you know put them uh, take the blender first, not the blender, the mix master, and mix them up first. So here we, uh, I'll start. I'm going to throw the pivot heads on and I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play on how I make uh, my my famous uh, jalapeno cheddar uh, um, uh, whole wheat buns, and they're they're really tasty. Everybody that's ever tried them, uh, you know, you, you look at the amount of jalapenos that are in there. Um, the cheddar cheese takes away the the rip roaring heat of the jalapeno, but you get that jalapeno taste uh, with the cheese, and then the egg uh, because the cheese and the bread causes it to be much more dense. It doesn't rise as much. The egg causes it to rise. So it sort of helps uh, still get a fluffy uh, cheese bun with, you know, some really nice jalapeno taste. They're not rip roaring hot. You don't eat them and burn your mouth out, but you definitely taste the jalapeno. So uh, I'll get going here and show you exactly uh, my mixing up process. All right, the first thing I do is we'll uh, get these eggs mixed up because uh, they're so firm. Like I said, the if you don't do this first, uh, what happens is uh, the eggs don't... Um, uh, mix up with crap. You can't bust them up once they're inside of something. So, as you can see, like with the mix master, it takes a while to bust the yolks up. And they actually get, they're, they're so, the yolks are so firm that they can actually go through the, um, the beaters on the mix master here and not get uh, broken up. So, so that's uh, the mixing up. We'll uh, come back to this uh, well, I'll come back to this later uh, once I'm done. All right, we've got the uh, the eggs now are uh, completely uh, broken up. It took a while, I'd say about almost a good minute and a half to break all the eggs up. 
uh, the yolks their uh, egg yolk on ducks are pretty firm so now i'm going to uh grate the cheese here uh, and we're gonna get it ready and then uh, we're gonna go on to the dangerous part the uh, peppers okay so we're uh, grating the cheese here and if you've noticed the cheese is uh, crumbling here and the reason for that is because this is being frozen um, and I bought a whole bunch of it, it was on sale uh, when I bought it because extra old cheese is root expensive uh, so when it was on sale I bought uh, what I knew I needed for this batch of bread uh, because normally this stuff is about nine dollars a, a brick each one of these bricks there it's about a pound there are 500 gram bricks so uh, it makes your bread really expensive if you can't get the stuff on sale. So I uh, buy it and then just freeze it and uh, thaw it out the night before. And, but the thing is, it breaks up. But it doesn't matter because we're uh, you know grating it anyway. So once I get this cheese grated up, we'll uh, throw it into the uh, big pot here for the mixing. Okay. So now I've got the uh, the cheese uh, grated up. All the cheese is in here is grated up. Here we'll just give you a shot of there, grated cheese. Okay. So now I'm going to take and it's time we're going to proof the uh, the yeast. Now you don't have to proof yeast. Uh, now that's two cups of water, uh, and then 40 grams of yeast, and oh, I think it was a half a cup of, of uh, sugar. I'm gonna put the recipe uh, below the um, in the description here exactly, just in case I'm forgetting. But we're gonna let that sit now. Uh, it only takes about 10 minutes to proof. It doesn't take long. So, and the only reason you do that is just to make sure your yeast is not dead because um, I used to just pour it in the, the whole mixture here, but if, you're, if your yeast is dead and you do this, then you, you, know, you don't know if your bread's gonna rise or not uh, properly. This way, if it uh, you know, starts rising in here, you know you've got active yeast, it's, it's alive, and you're not gonna have a, uh, a write-off on your batch of bread here. So now, uh, we've got the 100 milliliters or half a cup of salt goes in uh, with the uh, cheese. That goes in there. We've got the one cup of uh, sugar, and then we've got the one cup of uh, shortening. Now this is everything is at room temperature uh, because you don't want it cold and you don't want it hot. Uh, hot kills the yeast. Cold uh, the yeast doesn't uh, react. It doesn't grow. So now we've got the eggs, which is 20 duck eggs. All right. So now we're just going to leave this here like this for now. And I'm gonna throw in uh, eight cups of uh, warm water. All right, so we've got four cups of water. And we'll get another four more cups. So we've got a grand total of eight cups of water in here. Now, I normally, you know, the recipe says pour your milk in here. I don't do it that way because we've got to deal with these uh, these hot peppers and the only way that you can properly process these peppers I find is in the blender and I find that if you use a little bit of milk throw in some peppers a little bit of milk throw in the peppers you make a slurry and we'll get it going here and I'll show you what it looks like and uh, how we basically take white milk and turn it into Irish green is what it looks like uh, and I'm talking as in green Irish uh, but deadly hot so now I'm going to do this, I hope I don't regret doing this with my bare hands uh, because every time you handle these peppers you're taking your life in your hand. Oh, and of course they're, they're ripped. I'm throw the water down. And the reason I throw the milk in there is to give it some liquid to help uh, move around. Because if you just, what I found is, if I just throw in straight uh, peppers into the blender, uh, they get hung up and they don't blend. And you, with the liquid though, it gets a little more of a slurry and helps get the... Uh Now I find this works the best because now we've got a nice little slurry of uh, green here. I'll just show you the inside. It actually there's a couple of little pieces it needs to go. Yeah, we need to just a touch more here. And I'll just show you the inside here. Now that is dangerous milk. That's what you call uh, jalapeno milk, not uh, not the safe stuff. Now, be very careful when you pour it in because if it splashes and splashes up in your eyes, uh, it burns like a bugger. <laughs> it's dangerous. So, and that's how uh, 
I do it, I just basically you know, throw in about six, seven uh, peppers. Pour in some milk. And this milk carton has got the rip side. And you just. And that's how, uh, I won't, we won't videotape this whole thing, but this is how I uh, basically, we're going to take 40 hot peppers, turn them into a slurry. Uh, milk slurry so that we can mix it in here so that we get a nice uh, consistent uh, hot through the whole uh, batch of buns because if you do it uh, if you chop them up in pieces and throw them in you'll get hot spots in your buns I did the very first I did that way I sliced them up really thin and basically every you know you'd be biting into your bun and you would hit these hot spots that would rip your head off because these jalapenos are really really hot I found doing it this way by turning it into a slurry and mixing it right in with the milk and then mixing in with the you know the liquid mixture that you do for the bread uh, it gets it gets a nice consistent uh, taste of nice it's a nice mild jalapeno taste through the whole thing and the only reason it's mild is because you know it's being deadened down by the flour uh, and the cheese so I'll mix the rest of them up here and I'll show you what she looks like uh, once I get her mixed up all right so we've got the, all the jalapeno grated up all 40 uh, jalapenos uh, in a milk mixture which they look uh, you know looks pretty looks almost like uh, exorcist type vomit uh, but we've got it in here dangerous stuff like if you look at that eh? Uh, it's hard to believe that that right there would take your head off if you lick it, but we're not going to lick it. So now I'm uh, just taking a look here at the uh, yeast, and the yeast is rising. So, yeah, we've got uh, just a little bit more, just a little longer here. Okay, we've got uh, the yeast now is alive, it's working, it's, uh, it's proofed itself. And I've got the mixture here. You can take a look here. The camera person can take a shot here. Uh, what it looks like there is a green sludge. And we're going to mix in the yeast mixture here. Now we're going to mix this all up so we get a nice uh, mixture. If you take a look here. We've got uh, now. If you look here, all the green is floating to the top because that's the uh, uh, the uh, uh, I guess you call it the jalapeno uh, uh, pulp. And uh, it has to get mixed in here. Now we're going to, uh, I'm going to mix uh, 60 cups of uh, whole wheat flour, which I've got the flour right here. And we're going to need uh, 60 cups uh, here on the counter. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Well, there's a surprise here. This is where the road trip part comes in. So we're going to head on to part two of uh, making uh, the 100% whole wheat jalapeno cheddar uh, with duck egg uh, buns. Road trip time. Well, I guess you're wondering what uh, a pizzeria downtown uh, where I live uh, it has to do with making buns, but you're soon going to find out. What are you taping? Oh, I'm taping in front of your store. Store? Your store, yeah, the pizzeria I'm in. Oh. <laughs> and this is how I cheat making the buns. My friend Nicholas here, uh, the best pizzeria in town. I get to use this machine. It almost looks like exercise, exorcist vomit. That's nasty looking. It is. Hey? It is. It is, eh? Now it's roughly 60 cups. But we're going to go by eye. This is the only way to knead bread. Now I know it's basically 60 cups, but I'm, uh, I go by eye on this on a batch this size. All right, and that's done. It looks, uh, yeah, 
that's nice. Well, that's uh, about 70 cups, 75 cups of flour it took. I made a serious hole in my uh, flour bag here. All right, it's been uh, 90 minutes that uh, I had this, actually I had it covered and I had it sitting uh, um, in the um, uh, sun. So it's, uh, it's actually a little bit warm and it's, uh, it's, it's got a nice rise to it. She's, uh, that's a giant pot. So I figure that's probably about 10 dozen uh, buns, but we're gonna find out here shortly. And I'll show you uh, what's involved in the, uh, the cutting up process and, and how we weigh them and, uh, and how we get the uh, nummy tasting uh, jalapeno cheddar whole wheat buns to happen. Okay, I want to show you a, uh, that, that's a nice, it's like, just look at the size of that. Now, uh, because I just dumped it out of the, um, uh, the pot, it's got a little bit of um, um, uh, vegetable shortening on it. So I'm, I'm going to put a little bit more on it because it, we don't want it to dry out. And I'm going to cut off pieces uh, that I'm going to uh, do the, weigh them for the bun cutting. So, but first I'm going to uh, cut it off a chunk and then I'm going to uh, put a little uh, more um, uh, Crisco over top of it just so that it doesn't dry out while, we're, uh, while I'm working it to uh, make the buns. All right, so I'm going to cut off. Oh yeah, this is really nice uh, dough. It's got a nice uh, feel to it, nice silky feel. Now what I'm gonna do here is I've got uh, some uh, Crisco. And I just cover it like this. Just rub it with your hand, just so that uh, you get a coating on it. Now, this what this does is just stops the dough uh, from drying out because it's going to take us probably about an hour and a half here to uh, cut all these buns up. And an hour and a half, this would get really crusty. So by putting this uh, um, layer of uh, vegetable shortening over top, uh, it stops the uh, dough from drying out while I work it. And I've got it here, and we're going to work it and make it uh, so that we can uh, make it into bun. All right, so basically what I, I do here now, I've got the, uh, the uh, dough uh, spread out. I go uh, between 75 to 90 grams, and that's uh, I just keep cutting up chunks like this and if things go right every cut will be the right uh, oh wait or very very close to it and then I, after I cut them all up I'll just show you that we take and I roll it and it's pretty basic Flatten it, and now I got a tray. Okay, so I've got it shaped like that, and then we just flip it over, and one bun. And that's basically all it takes to uh, to do it. And now we're going to do about 120 of these, and we're going to set them out front in the living room and let them sit for 45 minutes, and then we do the oven. All right, this is the first batch of buns going to the oven, 15 minutes, and uh, we should have buns. Now, normally I don't make bread because I'm a bun kind of guy, but um, uh, I'm making uh, basically uh, four loaves, uh, four half loaves. Each one of these, uh, the, each this one here is uh, 500 grams each, so it's a kilo, so there's 2.2 pounds here. Uh, these are each 450 grams each, so they're 900 grams each tin. Now, I do it this way because when you cook it, uh, and then once you take it out of the oven, you put it on the table to cool, you split it apart, and you can freeze them uh, separately so that you've got uh, a much easier loaf to work with uh, instead of you know thawing out a whole loaf of bread uh, when you freeze it. Because I freeze all the bread uh, so that you know I've got it for later because I don't need as much bread at once, of course. But uh, so this is the first time I've done bread, but uh, I have done bread. I should say it isn't the first time I've done bread before this way, but I usually in my recipes, I on my bun recipe, I just stick to buns. But uh, so we're going to have some whole wheat, jalapeno, uh, uh, cheddar cheese, uh, duck egg uh, bread uh, in this batch. So it should be interesting what that turns out like, what it tastes like. It'll uh, good for sandwiches. So I've got uh, this much left now. Uh, of the uh, uh, dough, which you know, when the original video was like this big, 
So I've got about, uh, I think, around 90 buns made so far, or 80 buns made so far. I've got some in the oven right now, and I'm just waiting for them to come out so I can make some more buns uh, because I need the uh, tray that it's on, or the cookie sheet that it's on. So uh, we're pretty close. We're about four minutes away from taking the first batch out. All right, so this is the first batch, and it's 16 minutes. They're really light color. We'll just uh, see that, oh, they turned out. Look at the nice golden brown color. They don't look, uh, you know, they look so white on top, uh, but you know they're done they're gonna oh I can't wait to try those they're gonna be tasty jalapeno cheddar uh, duck egg whole wheat buns nummies okay so now I'm gonna put uh, some more in and uh, we'll see uh, but that took 16 minutes not 14 took a little longer I don't know if it's because of the eggs or uh, what uh, is the deal so that uh, let's go get some more okay so the next ones are uh, this tray we've got an eclectic uh, selection of uh, a bun material or, or bun uh, holders here. <laughs> I make buns, they're all shapes. All right, so 16 minutes and uh, we're off for the races. So now, I'll, uh, oh, look at these. Oh, they look so. Oh my god, you wouldn't. I oh, the smell of vision. Too bad we didn't have that on the internet. Oh, that smells good. Here, yeah. all right, that's 16 minutes for the second batch. Ooh, just look at them. They look good. Oh, they're perfectly brown. Absolute perfect. Okay. Next batch in. 16 minutes. But they uh, they turned out really nice. Ooh, that's a nice bun. All right. Another batch. I've been eating them. They're so tasty. I'm really gonna. I'm actually my supper's already screwed. I've already eaten so many of them. They're really uh, a, a blonde color uh, bun this time around, though. But they're definitely uh, cooking up nice. Like, look at that nice and golden brown on the bottom. I love when they go like that. And they sometimes they screw up and they get a little too dark. Like that one's a little bit dark, but it's uh, they're turning out good. All right, the next batch in. All right, that's another batch. And we've got another batch. Oh, they these guys really rose really nice. Look at that. It's strange how some of them uh, rise. And the thing is, is that the cheese really uh, causes the uh, <clears throat> bread not to rise. If there was no cheese in this, uh, these buns would be like three times taller. So we'll do another batch here. I find the best way to cool buns off too is on the uh, the old wood table, uh, the old fashioned way. I think my grandmother used to do it. Seems the wood sucks the heat out of the bun and helps firm it up and then you can freeze them. That's a sea of buns. All right, that's the bread. We're done. 10.05. Ooh, oh, that would look good. Oh, the back one really turned out crispy looking. A little too much, actually. But, well, that's it. 172 buns and uh, four loaves of bread. And 11 hours later. So by putting, uh, the, the instead of putting one whole piece of dough in, uh, you put two in, like I showed you in the, uh, the bread, and what happens is you get separated bread, just like that. It separates perfect. And you can freeze it, like, just like this, and you've got perfect loaves, uh, just the right size. So you're not taking a whole loaf out and having to eat it right away. And we'll freeze all this up. I'm gonna, I've got the freezer on flash freeze right now, so I'm going to load them all into the freezer. All 172 buns, and uh, I'll put these in once they cool off uh, in about an hour, half an hour. So I'm done. Uh, it's 10 after 10. I started at 11 this morning, so 11 hours. 172 buns. I ate four, so 176 buns. And then uh, my four loaves of bread, which weigh like two pounds each. Uh, but they're half low, so there's like this is like 500 grams. That's heavy. 
has a lot of bread. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't look very big, but it's serious, serious dense uh, bread. Uh, you know, you've got the cheddar cheese. You've got you know the uh, eggs. Uh, you know the uh, jalapeno. There's a lot in that bread. It's tasty. So that's why when I make uh, bread, this is uh, how I do it. So it's the old uh, go big or go home on the duck adventure.